One Piece 1009 Analysis Yonko joined forces, Kaido is afraid of Luffy? Law and Kid pushed Big Mom into the sea. Hello everyone, welcome back to Top Shonen. In the previous chapter 1008, all the problems surrounding Kojiki Odin were resolved. It was actually just a painting drawn by Kanjiro, he was not dead, and intended to use Odin to deceive the Nine Hong Bao, then to haunt them. Thankfully, Ashuradaji bravely embraced the fake doll, jumping outside. The explosion did not harm the others, but Ashuradaji's life was fragile right now. However, Kinnaman and the others had no time to grieve, they immediately went to find Kanjiro for revenge, and protected Momonosuke. At this moment, Jack Drought arrived, after defeating the army of Mink in the way. In the end, Inuarashi chose to stay, solo with Jack. Elsewhere, Orakai is setting a fire, aiming to destroy Kaido's castle, avenge his betrayal. And Kaido's daughter is trying to get to the top with Luffy, and defeat her father with him. She expressed concern for Lu, who is currently losing her position, as she repeatedly attacked without any effect. Young Buffalo Kid commented, that facing these two at the same time, it is no different from hell. Law also suggested separating one of the two emperors, getting the consensus of the two immediately. And in this new chapter, Law's plan will be realized, what did they do to get rid of one of them? And the Hell Kid said, how frightening is it? I will send to you all right now, in the One Piece 1009 analysis video, titled, Hell. Put out the fire, where the water, put out the fire, the beginning of this chapter is the chaotic scene inside the castle. Due to the fire of the Orakai, the already burning flames spread out, causing the zoo's ice cubes to flutter to put out the fire. And the culprit has a sudden reunion, with old enemies. He and Fukuro Kyujo were going somewhere, accidentally bumping into the Nine Hong Bao, on their way to find Momonosuke. Orakai, Kinnaman, the two sides seemed quite surprised when they met, but from his point of view, Kinnaman didn't care too much about this cowardly shogun. The real enemy, determined to be Kaido from the beginning, has not had any details in Kinnaman's plan yet, is to take Orakai's life. Even if he can't kill Kaido, Momonosuke's top priority is still, compared to an Okanban like Jack, Orakai is not as appreciated. They did not think of looking for Orakai, but when they met it by accident, it was convenient to deal with it. Fukuro Kyuju, realizing the danger, advised Orakai to leave, because no one knew about Kaido's beheading before. The more he proved his inference in the 1008 chapter analysis video, Orakai's ability was only Fukuro Kyuju known, he also wanted to hide this, so he left Hodori, with the Anue Banjo team, to find Orakai alone. Fukuro Kyuju advised Orakai to stay away, let him take care of it, for fear of revealing it, the persimmon will wait for him to be reborn, then kill continuously until all eight new lives are gone. However, Orakai did not listen to his subordinate's advice, fool. If we come back, we will be surrounded immediately. Moreover, Kaido has beaten them to the ground. It seems that he thinks that I can really do something, when he sees the Zich Sao group seriously wounded. I also hope that Orakai can do something more attractive, but let's see what he can do. The first is a few blunt words, turns out these are the remnants of the Kojiki family. Kanjiro's truth, must have terrified you all? But I have to admit, you surprised me too, Kyo's hero. Maybe both of you are acting too deep. Unexpectedly, Orakai, one of his two most powerful arms, was a red scabbard, so the score was one in the zone matchup. Next is a duel, Orakai transforms into his Zoan form, you count carefully, you will only see seven heads, because one of the previous ones was cut down by Kaido. You guys are half alive and dead, you guys, don't scare me. I will do everything, to put an end to your suffering. You souls will have to pay the price, for sticking to me for twenty years. So after twenty years, Orakai admitted for the first time, that he was really scared of the red envelopes. Although in the past, whenever I heard that a subordinate laughed, or slandered me, when mentioning the nine red scabbards, it was Orakai that he would execute it. That is, he still has dignity, but now in front of him as his enemy, alongside his most loyal subordinate, Orakai has admitted his fear. But he also has enough confidence, as well as the courage to fight against the red envelope, no longer afraid like ghosts. However, that was not enough, he also needed strength, because from Kanjiro, to Orakai, Kinnaman and his teammates reached the limit of their stamina. Right now, they were furious, and the majestic double frame was reserved by Oda, to show the Nine Hong Bao beheading Orakai. In his weird big beam form, 
each of Orakai's heads was cut down in the blink of an eye. After he was swinging his sword to relieve his mind, Kinnaman called Orakai the kind of goosebumps, not worth wasting his time, he would be condemned in hell. So the first hell of Chapter 1009, has opened the door to welcome Orakai in, but is he really dead or not? Last time Kaido cut one head, Orakai now had seven, but in one turn the Red Star cut all of his life, so he was dead? I don't think so, and definitely not. There are four reasons why I think so, first of all, Fukuro Kyujo's expression, it's no different from seeing Kaido beheading Orakai, in Chapter 985. He didn't show too much anxiety, with absolute loyalty, Fukuro Kyujo's reaction would be different, if Orakai died. The second reason, Chapter 986, stabbed Kaido, that's where he cut Orakai, I'm sure Kinemon noticed, saw Orakai's corpse lying there. As for Fukuro Kyuju, it was not until Chapter 990 that he left, and at that time had the chance to take Orakai's body elsewhere. And just now, Kinemon said, we don't have enough time for a cheap, shabby head like you, proving that he already knows Orakai's trickery. The Eightfold Powers truly grant him eight lives, but after death, it takes a while to be reborn. In the previous part, I said that Kinemon doesn't care about killing Orakai, but just wants to kill Kaido, and Momonosuke is most important right now. He knew how to cut off his head and Orakai didn't die right away, but he was not free to wait for him to revive and then kill again, his family was busy. The third reason, is the head of Orakai in the picture you are seeing. Seven heads were cut off, but Oda drew only one, which in my opinion represents another of Orakai's life gone, just like the drawing of the head that was cut by Kaido. That means each time he is killed, even if he cuts off all his heads, Orakai will only lose one life, the next transformation will lack one head, representing one life. The last reason, Oda wouldn't let Orakai have just revived a chapter, and died right away, it was quite a waste. He may be too weak, but compared to the Red Rose, let Orakai live, he and Kanjiro would cause a lot of trouble for the Beast Pirates, before being killed once and for all. For these four reasons, I believe this time Orakai is not dead, the answer will wait for Oda, but for now let's continue with the content of Chapter 1009. I'm surprised Fukuro Kyuju, you are devoted to such a fool, what more do you guys have? You also understand, between us is the fate of an inevitable confrontation, before we even choose our master, Reizo. So there was one person in the chain that didn't go looking for Momonosuke, that was Reizo, who stayed behind to punish the traitor, who betrayed the Kojiki clan, and served Orakai. He was surprised to understand why such a person was so loyal to Orakai. But in my opinion, partly because Odin will be the future shogun, under Odin has Reizo, a ninja who is the great enemy of Fukuro Kyuju, so he decided to choose Orakai to help Orakai as a shogun. Perhaps the old feud with Reizo had to be deep, so Fukuro Kyuju just said that. We will learn more about it in later chapters, to get to real hell. Switch scene to the top of the skull, at this time Big Mom is inviting Kaido to join forces, to see if the five supernovae will be left with floating pillars. Kid turned to wonder, Trafafgar. Can't you use your power, kick one of them away? I did it for a long time. Their haki is so strong, I can't push it directly, I said in the video spoiler, so I don't repeat it. Law tells him he can't act directly, so they will use the indirect method to get rid of one of the four emperor. Kid was very excited, okay. Then we will coordinate, let them dissolve the swarms. Right now, thanks to Haki's high-level observation, Luffy feels a very dangerous future. However, unlike in Yudin, he cannot act to stop, but can only warn of danger. On the side of Kaido and Big Mom, the two four emperors are using a fairly similar posture, preparing to launch a combination attack. And I'm sure, the two did this pose many times in the past, while in the rocks. So Kaido asked, I hope your legs and hips are still strong enough, she is stout, must say the extreme crockery El Eugenin, comes from the lord of the Kaido horns. When he turned, seeing that his once beautiful sister had bruises and calluses, he thought of 43 husbands, then 85 of Big Mom's children, then looked at the horns above his head. Suddenly he was on Big Mom's hip, pelvis and leg joints, I also said here, everyone who has bone and joint problems, call me right away, my family has three years of treatment for spinal degeneration, herniation. Disc Disc, who is not sick, is 100% committed to cure. Press the button to ignore the haunting YouTube ad, we go back to Big Mom, reply to Yusei Kaido, is a phase on the face of Big Mom, who do you think you're talking to? Boy. At this time, 
the supernova side also noticed Luffy's warning. Although he did not foresee the future, Zoro and Killer could still sense the combined power of the two Yonko, thanks to common observation Haki. Zoro exclaimed crazy, while Killer said can't be helped, showing how fast and powerful it was, perhaps for the first time in their life, they had seen such a terrible move. And this move is called conquering the sea, Kaido and Big Mom combined Haki into the same attack, then launched out, like the two giants Dori and Bragi used to do. At this point, I suddenly thought, Kaido did not know the moves of giants like Big Mom, Leo Batfuck also hit directly, how could he do this? Was Big Mom taught Kaido in the past? Above, I said, the two emperors performed this technique together, while still in the rocks. And then, Kaido also put armed Haki into the mulberry tree, swinging his hand after Big Mom. More specifically, he contributed Haki, to increase the power of the attack, and the way of merit is still Big Mom's, this attack is basically the same as Ui Kwok, but the power is more than a hundred times. And that blow caused a terrible shock on the top of the skull, looking at this picture frame, we saw an explosion the size of a quarter of Oni Island, it was too horrible. But there was no blow through the mountain, flying up to the sky, making Kaido and Big Mom both bewildered. It turned out that it was intercepted, the one doing it was Azoro, he used the three swordsmanship to block the entire Hakai move. All of us run away. We can't let them wipe them all, he said while coughing up blood, proving Zoro was on his way. But behind him is the captain, and his comrades, as seen as kid, would rather sacrifice himself and not let Luffy die, Zoro acted like he did in Thriller Bark. Although he knew he might die, he still rushed forward, despite three out of four people not part of the Straw Hat crew, since being injured in the back was an insult to a swordsman, Zoro never turned and ran. And no wonder running or blocking, great Zoro. Taking that chance, Kid and Luffy immediately jumped away, Law also burst into speed, only Killer was the most pitiful so he got a little hit. The main reason is that Zoro could not hold out any longer, Killer just jumped out, he also fell, and the attack of the two Emperor was flying into the sky, and the roof of the castle was turned into a plane. Looking at this scene, could Zoro have flown in color? Not at all, because Kaido used his observation hacky to find out that five supernovae were still alive. I can still feel them. Impressive. They have escaped in time, even Big Mom Emperors also had to praise and acknowledge the power of supernovas. Come here, please allow me to say one thing, that is, no captain of the four emperors can eat five people standing on top of the skull. Previously, we still thought that Luffy showed up compared to the captains, excluding Ben Beckman, and the other four young men were not equal to the first leader. But there was a video where I said that Kid, Law, Zoro had to win against Katakuri and King. Marco is not sure, Killer will be weaker than the other four. To this day, I am more confident that what I said in that video is correct, look at how Big Mom lost his memory, knocked Queen unconscious in two moves, then grabbed Marco by the neck, making him unable to move without full strength. Strong. And now, Zeus and Prometheus have fully charged the battery, Big Mom has 100% capacity, and Kaido must turn into a hybrid. And even more classic, the two emperors have beaten their strength, with the aim of killing the supernovae, they are even combined together, but our five young people are still safe. To challenge the Yonko, it requires them to present the captain of the first team, no matter who you are a fan of, you must admit at this time, no commander can win these five supernovas. We're only counting the commanders shown, not talking about Ben Beckman. Through the moments of life and death, their haki will become stronger, the next generation of pirates that Odin mentioned is this, they are able to defeat Kaido. As for Luffy, there is a video I say you are equal to the Marine Admiral, it seems to be true, soon you will see. Zoro. Still staying with us? Bumpy, still answered Law, meaning that he was badly injured but Z was fine, and luckily Mr. Luate could use the swap to save Zoe's life. The Buffalo Kid didn't forget to express his appreciation, at Zoro's act of selflessness, it didn't take long, but thanks for stopping it. Where's the straw hat? Kid wonders when he can't see L.U., but he's slowly proving himself up to Admiral's level for the real thing. Being one level higher than other supernovas, not only dodging, but also taking advantage of Luffy to approach the two Yonko, in the moment of the tremor. He uses the Gomu Gomu no Red Hawk, attacks Kaido, for daring to injure Zoro. Although not as terrible as Red Rock, but notice Luffy's arm, it is no longer blackened, but is still on fire, and Kaido must actively dodge. This part wasn't Lu who hadn't recovered Haki but he used a high-level armed hacky to attack, 
so Oda stopped blacking his arm. As for Kaido, the Emperor can certainly use the Haki foreseen in the future, but since Kaido relies on buffalo skin, normally he does not want to avoid it, the fruit that is cut by Odin is a form of dragon that is too big, cannot be avoided, and also not strong. As of now. But now, facing Luffy, he had to dodge the attack, daring not to let him hit any more. Apparently Luffy is on the level of a naval admiral, able to scare the four emperor. Seeing Kaido dodge his punches, Luffy smirked, jokingly saying why dodge it Kaido? It hurts, isn't it? This proves that what Luffy said at the end of chapter 1008 is correct, it must work. We've hit them so much, they must have felt it. They are people just like us. Kaido also knows it hurts, if he takes a lot of attacks he will be in danger, so he just used this hybrid form, and now dodge the attack. But being insulted by the brat he cannot forgive, Kaido swung his knees in response. Luffy now foresaw the future, immediately covering his arm with an armed haki, blocking Kaido's blow. He doesn't call out the name of the move anymore, but with Luffy being unable to dodge it, I believe it's still lightning Oh, The difference is that now it can no longer threaten Luffy, he has just used a high-level armed haki to attack, of course still using it to create invisible armor. But to be more sure, Lu also buffed an extra haki in his arm to support, because Kaido's haki was much stronger anyway. As a result of using two layers of defense, Luffy was just knocked away, and felt a pain in his hand. Kaido got even more furious, when his one hit lack before, now only making it hurt, he rushed forward, firing something like a heat attack. From now on, if I don't call out names, I will default to consider those as known moves. This hybrid form is scary in that, Kaido can both use haki and weapons, is flexible, and can use the power of dragons. The shot just finished wasn't as big as heat, but the giant dragon had the power to be different from a beastman's form. Perhaps Kaido also knew that this attack was not going to work, he flew up and released all the strength he had. Look closely, first of all, turn the lower half of the body into a dragon to fly, when he got up enough, he turned back to the same time, at the same time rotating the mantle in circles, now there were black lightning, I don't know if it's thunder or armed haki. But the natural element in one piece couldn't buff haki, so I guess it was the crack caused by the high level armed haki. With this move, destroying the three realms, it must be much stronger than lightning, Kaido slammed into Luffy. Maybe Lu used two layers of haki to defend like before, but seeing the fruit jump up high and then hit the ground like this, the possibility of Luffy going to hell once again. Basically, an admiral was still punched on the face by Whitebeard, falling into the rift, so telling Lu to be like Kaido to eat like this, fainting is normal. This is the full power we have been waiting for, of the monster named Kaido, who is known as the most powerful creature in the world. On the other side, they are discussing their plans to eliminate Big Mom, while Luffy is keeping Kaido. Law felt relieved when he couldn't hear the Gomu Gomu no sound anymore, Zoro saw his captain being beaten, he called Luffy, but was no longer able to rescue. As for Kid, he just made a metal box, he told Law that the preparations were done, and he immediately opened the room. While Big Mom did not understand anything, Zeus was tricked with shambles in the box. Why is it so dark? Where am I? Zeus's voice caught Big Mom's attention, she discovered its location, intending to rescue. But the supernovae did not give her a chance, ready Roranoa, always ready. So he and Killer rushed to attack the other two homies, because they were engrossed in Zeus, Big Mom easily let Killer knock Napoleon out of his hand, while Zoro sliced Prometheus in half, causing Big Mom to fall on his face. Now she officially turned into four clowns, before the sweet combination of plows and pipe tobacco, of supernovas. Even, Zoro continued to use the fire-cutting technique, slashing Prometheus into pieces, giving it all the way to heal. And Killer chased and beat Napoleon, asking if you knew who your father was. But Napoleon did not know who his father was, because he only had mother, all three homies simultaneously asked Big Mom to save them. At this point, Kid's turn to act, he shot Big Mom with punk pistol, but the arrows stabbed Big Mom all fell off, because she had a powerful armed hacky to protect. You brats, really fantasizing about getting rid of them, is there a door with me? At the end of the sentence, Kid took a super painful punch. Looking at this picture frame, we see that Big Mom's hand was not blacked, like Luffy when he punched Kaido, but still made Kid bleed his mouth. Since from now on, it'll be the game of those with high-level armed haki, so sometimes you won't see Oda in black. And Kid, he received a punch from the four emperor without falling, 
this is the result of the training course at Uden. Being locked up here, wearing sea handcuffs and hard labor, greatly increased Kid's stamina, as well as Luffy's stamina. And he punched for a reason, the purpose for Big Mom to come close, then can catch her. Kid grabbed Big Mom with his prosthetic arm, then used his magnetic power to push her up, with repel. When Big Mom was floating, Law would do the rest of the work, he used tact, lifted a rock and threw it at her. Big Mom still laughed at them, but when he realized his real purpose, that sarcastic smile was gone. Law has blurred a very large room, because the skull compared to ONI Island has not eaten, if you throw her down on the ground, Big Mom will return quickly. So Law had just opened a room that spanned the entire island, so that he could control the rock to push her into the sea. Kinnaman told Orakai to let Hell judge, and Law let Big Mom let the sea decide. She called Zeus to save, it also responded with lightning. However, the box was based on the Faraday cage principle, it could not escape, and Big Mom kept falling. Zeus can't save her now. It's about time she got off the stage. These are Law's last messages to Big Mom, the plan he has outlined is a great success, now only Kaido remains. However, our side also had to pay a price that was not cheap, Kid received one punch from Big Mom, not minor injuries. In the final frame, Zoro coughed up blood after overuse. While Killer is also somewhat involved in Hawkeye, the heaviest one is probably Luffy. He alone has to solo with Kaido, receive the full technique of destroying the Three Realms, not knowing whether to remain sane or not. The five supernovae now only Law is the most powerful, and the real Kaido, but you are all tattered, don't know what to do next. And will Kaido stay in battle with the young pirates, or turn into a dragon to fly to help Big Mom? We'll be waiting for Chapter 1010 to come out next week. And I have finished analyzing the latest 1009 chapter, if you find it interesting, please donate the likes, share, and subscribe to a channel to support Top Shounen. Goodbye and see you again. Yeah.